Hello, welcome to this week's clinical case. Um, this is a clinical case regarding an upper left three, a root canal and upper left three, and we're going to talk about apical gauging today. And what I mean by apical gauging is that um, sometimes the uh, the apex or shall we say the portal of exit, the little hole that sticks out the end of the tooth, um, is, you know, has different um, diameters. So, you know, um, usually the diameter is about between 20 and 25, but in some cases this diameter can be much larger. And I suppose there's a bit of a debate between doing a conventional root canal, say just using GP, um, to to what do, uh, to what diameter level does um, do do we do we use conventional filling techniques, obturation techniques over say using an apexification? Today we're not going to do an apexification. That's where we uh, get a biceramic putty and we place a plug at the end of the tooth. Today we're going to use a a more traditional. Um, obturation technique just using um, a sealer, bioceramic sealer and the GP.2 length. But you'll notice with this case is that, um, you know, uh, as we uh, shape the tooth, we shape it quite easily. But when we come to obturate it, we use our matched cone that pushes throughout the end. And, um, you know, this, this video just is going to demonstrate or show you how to essentially obturate or gauge the end of the the root to see how thick it is, and um, and then and then obturate it uh, successfully. So we'll just have a look at the X-ray here. This is an X-ray of an upper left three, and you can see here that the uh, the canal space here is quite wide, and you know um, all of my root canals are essentially the same price. And, and and I mention this because you'd think that um, you know doing a doing an upper three there's only one canal and doing an upper molar there's three canals so there's more to do but actually um, to to obturate a a wide canal is quite technically difficult to do it well so this is why um, you know each tooth isn't easier than the other you know I'm not saying an anterior is more easy than a than a, than a molar I think they have their different challenges and essentially usually with the molars they're uh, quite sclerosed or calcified the canals but with uh, anterior teeth you know the, the the canals are wide so it's, it's more difficult to keep the uh, the obturation within the the the, uh, the, the apex of the tooth um, another thing to mention with this tooth as well is that um, the, the reason why we find out that the apex is wide is because this uh, patient has uh, suffered some kind of resorption. Um, possibly she's had uh, orthodontic treatment in the past. I think that's what it was. And, um, and maybe the orthodontist has moved the teeth too quickly. Um, she'd also traumatized the tooth and that's how she'd lost the upper left too. So there's kind of that, um, you know, uh, uncertainty to why the roots are blunted at the end. And, um, and obviously if you uh, resorb away or blunt away the, the root, that's going to bring the portal of exit further coronally, which is going to make the, the, the portal of exit wider. So essentially, you know, this lady suffered a bit of resorption on this tooth and it's made the, uh, the, the hole at the end of the tooth wider. So as always, we want to start with accessing the tooth. Accessing an anterior teeth can sometimes be difficult, mainly because you want to get the angulation correct um, with your burn. Luckily, in this case, um, you know I've dropped it down really, really nicely. I'm just using a DG16 endodontic probe here just to have a have a little feel around, and I've accessed it nicely. And what I've started to do in this case is I like to use an orifice opener just to sort of open up this uh, this 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 cavity here. So first thing I'm going to do is just uh, irrigate the tooth and I'm going to use this high flex orifice opener. I believe it's a 25, uh, 12 taper. So it's got quite a thick taper on it. And I'm going to use this to uh, essentially just widen this uh, this space. Now I, I could use ultrasonics or I could use a fast handpiece, but I think in this case, using the orifice opener was just, just, a, just a bit easier for us. So as we know, the canal space is really, really wide. So I don't really need to shape much to get our working length. I'm going to use a size 15K file here. Of course, we know using a 15 is the best way up between a small enough file to get to length and big enough for us to get an accurate working length with our apex locator. 
and essentially I just pop the clip on the size 15k file here I very 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 gently push it to length and I um, I rightly or wrongly like to uh, uh, push the file out of the end of the tooth and then back it up and I feel like this gives us the most accurate reading because sometimes you know when you're um, using the apex locator and you're pushing its length you get to zero and if you push it a little bit further you're still at zero and you know that's the difference between millimeters is is massive of course so we um, record the zero reading here and it's 21 millimeters so I'm going to use a size 10 high flex glide path file here at zero, and I am just going to uh, shape the tooth, and and and, and this, this glide path file just pushes right to length, nice and easy. And then we are gonna use our master apical file. This is a size 25 variable high flex, and we're gonna minus 0.5 millimeters away from the zero reading, so I'm gonna shape uh, this tooth with this file to 20.5 millimeters. And then, Essentially, what I'm ready to do now is I am ready to do our comb fit radiograph. So straight away, we've shaped it within the first 10 minutes. I'm going to get this uh, measuring uh, block here. I'm going to measure my GP point to 20.5, and then I'm going to push this to length. And I'm going to make a tiny little bend at the end of the GP cone. And as I push this to length, the uh, the GP cone pushes past this uh this 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 measurement so i'm going to get my tweezers i'm going to crimp it at the uh the reference point and then as i pull this gp point out i'm going to measure it and we can see here that we're at 21.5 millimeters so a millimeter um longer than we should do so i'm going to use this gutter cutter here so i'm going to sort of guesstimate around the point where i'm about a millimeter through this transpires that we're at 35 um, diameter here. I'm going to use the gutter cutter just to cut the uh, GP point off and then I'm going to push this to length. You could of course use hand files but I feel like using this gutter cutter is the most cost effective. So we're going to push the GP cone again to length. Again it slips slightly past so I'm just going to crimp it at the reference point again. I'm going to pull it out, measure it and we're again we're still at about 21 uh, millimeters so I'm gonna go up with my gutter cutter I'm gonna cut it to 40 so that's about a millimeter again and uh, once we cut this off it's just the same thing and we're gonna uh, place this GP cone uh, to length and um, in this case I'm just gonna have a little feel for a little bit of tug back as I push it to length I feel like it just is poking out ever so slightly so I feel like it's still a little bit too long meaning the the, the diameter of the cone at the end is 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 too thin and we can see here now we're at 21 so we're at the zero reading but we want to knock 0.5 millimeters off so we're going to cut it again a tiny bit more so we're going to apically gauge this GP point to 45 and when we push it to length feel again for a little bit of tug back so we know that the GP cone is at the the end of the tooth and when we get our tweezers and we crimp the GP point at the reference point when we pull it out we can see that we are at our reading of 20.5 and in fact we take the cone fit radiograph so what I like to do is I like to push the cone obviously back to length I have I push it nice and firmly so it's to length we're going to use a, a pair of uh, scissors just to cut the excess off because sometimes when you've got GP cones uh, sort of hanging off we uh, take the, the the frame off the um, the rubber dam and sometimes this sort of excess can push the GP cone out and when we look at our cone fit radiograph we can see we're just a little bit too long so I'm not happy with that some people might think well oh it's not too bad we can just sort of uh, put up with that but in in my book that's too long so the very very first thing what we want to do is we want to just recheck the working length is it correct so again I'm going to use my size 15 uh, k file I am going to make sure the inside of the canal is wet or it's got irrigant in it and again when we uh, uh, use our apex locator I'm going to very very gently push um, the, the k file to length it's going to go out the end so we're going to go past the zero reading and then we're going to bring it out again and, and that gives it our most uh, accurate reading and then I just remove the rubber stopper to the reference point and when we uh, take it out and we do our measurements again it transpires that the zero reading is actually 
uh, 20 0.5 rather than 21 so that is a difference between 0.5 millimeters so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to just get a fresh gp cone now we know that we've got that new zero reading i'm going to measure the gp cone and again we're we're we're, we're about 1.5 millimeters uh, past the the point where that we should be and um we know now that um i got up to 45 with our cutting so i'm going to use the 50 so i'm going to go up a tiny tiny little bit so um we we know that 50 is taking a little bit more off the end of that cone and then when we push this gp cone to length i'm just going to firmly place it at the end of the tooth and then um, i'm just going to crimp the cone at the reference point pull it out measure it and we can see now we're at 20 so we're 0.5 millimeters away from the new zero reading and when we take the uh, the comfort radiograph again i'm i'm happy that this is too length okay so uh, the, the the apex on this tooth is slightly um slightly off but i'm i'm happy so the apex um on this radiograph isn't so obvious but i am relatively happy that this cone is to length so what we're ready to do now is we are ready to do our final irrigation protocol i use this style italiano um gp disinfecting ring what i like to do is to uh, use sodium hypochlorite and just fill a little well up with that and i also use 17 percent edta and fill another well up with that and then during the disinfecting protocol, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disinfect the GP that I've used. So I'm going to place that GP cone into a bath of sodium hypochlorite. And then while that's kind of soaking in there, I am going to irrigate the tooth with sodium hypochlorite, more sodium hypochlorite, and I'm going to activate that. And I'm going to use the same syringe just to pull up uh, the 17% EDTA. Notice that I'm using the same syringe and I'm using the same Iriflex tip just for cost effectiveness. And then I'm going to use this EDTA within the tooth. I'm going to irrigate copiously with EDTA, activation, um, uh, irrigation, activation. Really, really just use all of that EDTA to remove that smear layer in the tooth. I'm going to just push the excess EDTA back into where it was. And then I'm going to do a final rinse with sodium hypochlorite. And I'm going to take the sodium hypochlorite that was used to disinfect the GP cone. And this is, this is, this makes it nice and efficient. It's also all in the same kind of area. So we're not getting like little dappens pots out. We're also not too concerned about cross infection problems because it's all in this kind of little area. Then we're going to dry the canal space and remember we're using size 25 paper points here and what we don't want to do is we don't want to push these paper points out the end so believe it or not we're going to we're going to measure these paper points at 20 and luckily um on the side of these paper points you can see these little black marks and one's for 18 one's for 20 and one's for 22 i'm going to push these paper points uh at this 20 millimeter length so i'm not going to push these through if you push these paper points past the apex they are the best way of causing uh, the, the the canal space to backfill with blood because basically the the dry paper point is just going to tear the tissue past the apex and this is going to bleed in and then you'll just spend lots and lots of time trying to stop the bleeding okay so it's not great for you it's not great for the patients and it just frustrates you so um you know you could use paper points that are wider in diameter but in this case i'm just using the size 25 again it's nice and cost effective we're then ready to use our obturation technique. I'm going to use this one fill with a visco tip. I'm going to load the visco tip by pushing a little bit out onto the back of my hand. And then I, um, I'm concerned about extrusion with this. So I'm just going to measure the visco tip, uh, kind of a guesstimation of where I don't want to push it too far. We're going to use the visco tip within the canal space. Remember, you're going to need to use high magnification in this case. And I'm just going to fill the coronal to mid third with this one fill by a ceramic and then I'm ready to put my GP cone to length I'm going to take the GP cone out of the disinfector I'm going to just dab it on some uh, paper again some people may argue dabbing it onto paper um, might reintroduce uh, bacteria um, I suppose people have got a got a good point there and then I'm just going to push this GP cone very 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 gently to length okay and then once we've pushed the GP cone to length, we're going to just cut the excess off with a uh, with a heated plugger. And what you need to make sure that you do is that you uh, remove 
um, enough uh, G excess GP, so the GP lay lies below the CEJ, okay? Because so, if you leave GP within the crown um, over a very, very long period of time, this can cause the tooth to become uh, discolored, okay? So make sure it's a bit of a pain, but make sure you've removed enough GP. And then I'm, here I'm just using these Mac 2 pluggers just to condense the GP down nicely. Make sure you get the, the, the obturation nicely condensed. And then to finish off, um, what I'm going to use is a, an ultrasonic just to remove the excess sealer. Um, of course, if I was using a resin-based sealer, I couldn't use water to remove the excess. This is the great thing about a bioceramic. And then, um, you know, when I've used the water down there, it's, it's filled up the cavity space. So we're just going to use a couple of paper points just to wick out the, the, the excess moisture. Once we've wicked out all the excess moisture, I am going to... Uh, seal off the top of this GP with Vitribond and Vitribond is a light cured GIC and I'm, I'm going to use these special Akidose tips here and the great thing about this GIC is obviously you don't need to etch and bond and the, 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 the cone has been cut quite far down this canal space and you know using etch and bond so far down is going to be completely impossible also the GIC is going to chemically bond to the tooth so it's going to create a nice seal once we have light cured that GIC, we're then going to use a self etch. Okay, so again, we've sort of brought the cavity further up, but um, you know, again, using uh, an etch and bond sort of system here is going to be completely impossible. So you need to use a self etching um, bond. But of course, I've 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 used the bond and it's and it's pooled all at the bottom base of the cavity here. So I'm just using a couple of paper points to wick this out. We're gonna then light cure it and then I'm going to use this fantastic SDR so this SDR is a uh, bulk flow uh, composite it's got a really really nice um, sort of metal thin tip on so you know you can place it really really deep and you know where it's going to go and then when we look at the x-ray again you know looks really 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 nice it isn't at the radiographic apex but we know Again, if you've seen a lot of my videos, we know that the radiographic apex and the anatomical apex aren't always the same. And, you know, we look at the x-ray, it's got a really nice monoblock kind of filling here. Um, and um, one thing to note about the Vitribond, it is not radio opaque. So here you can see a kind of a, a space between the obturation and the final filling material that is actually filled, but it's but it's just a, a radio lucent uh, filling material. And um, and that's it. You know, if you love the channel, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or you have any criticisms, you think something could have been done differently, I think it's really, really important to voice your concerns or your criticisms in the comment section below. I love debate. No question or no answer or no criticism it's ever taken any 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 way at all other than, um, you know, just, just, just to advance our learning. Um, and if you really, really love the channel, we've got a membership program. The membership program is a small monthly fee. It's... It supports the channel and also you get early access to content. I usually run a week or two weeks ahead. Um, and so you'll get access to, you know, two weeks worth of content before everybody else. And overall, thanks for watching and I will see you next week in the next video. Bye bye.